Comics are for kids, aren't they? Bull what if I were to tell you that some of the best books I've read are actually graphic novels? Not just some of the best books, these are books which have actually influenced and changed my life. <gasps> Sounds strange. Let me introduce you to the fascinating and amazing world of graphic novels by talking about five graphic novels, five graphic novels, which influenced and changed my life. Also for us to get a little more immersed in this world of graphic novels, I'm gonna do my name is Shubham Kurana and as a lot of you know, I'm the creator of Corporate Comics, which has about 205k followers on Instagram. I'm a webcomic creator and published uh, comic author as well, who's been doing comics now for over five years. Today, I intend to talk about how I got introduced into this world of uh, comics or if you are a purist and wants to really differentiate the world of graphic novels. And uh, I'm going to talk about the five graphic novels which you must read and pick them as of today. The first book which we're going to talk about is, surprise, surprise, I'm sure there is none, Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi. This is possibly the most famous graphic novel of all times. This is exactly where I started as well. And uh, if you've read any graphic novels, there's a great chance that you've already read this one. But if you're starting your journey, this absolutely is the best place to start. It's so famous that it's also been made into an animated movie. It was published back in 2000, 2003, and it's autobiographical. The first part chronicles a lot more about her childhood in Iran. And the part two is how that influenced her early adulthood in uh, Vienna. What is the book about? It's a coming of age uh, autobiographical graphic novel. But what's interesting is that it's set against the backdrop of the Islamic revolution in Iran, which was happening in the 1980s, which is also the time where Marjane Satrapi was growing up. And hence, you also get to see the political turmoil and how that sort of influences her identity and then in part two you actually see a lot of that play out and how she's away from home but her beliefs are guided by how she was brought up uh, even though she was brought up uh, by really liberal parents. What I love about it uh, is first of all it's like a novel. It's, it's not uh, one of those tall uh, hardbound graphic novels. It's actually one which is just in the size of a novel that makes it uh, all the more accessible. The second thing which I love about it is that it's black and white. A lot of graphic novels or comics or illustrations in the comic format use black and white ink, which is not a surprise, but a lot of them also use what you call hatching, which is those lines and crosses to bring about the shadows or other highlights or uh, a lot more realistic character. The beautiful part about it is how it only plays with black and white and the negative and the positive spaces and still is beautifully illustrated even in those small frames. And what's also amazing and what I love about it is that it is extremely personal. They're small frames, but they're beautifully represented. Here's an example. If you see where she's showing this conflict and this dilemma, and she's talking about religion, but she's also talking about how the family was modern. She goes in and does beautiful symbolism and beautiful art to back that. This is actually the first time where I understood how the written word, if complemented nicely by art, instead of just telling exactly the same story can actually add so much substance and so much depth into the writing itself. And that's why I recommend this to be the absolute first place where you should start. How it changed me is, first of all, it made me realize the power of the medium. I always used to think of graphic novels as comics, which I'm sure a lot of you do as well. Not to belittle comics or the awesomeness of them by any means, but this really got me introduced to the genre and how strong and powerful this medium could be. The second, I also felt that I had read a lot of personal stories before, but when, as I said, rightfully complemented by art, it made me feel extremely deeply immersed. And the third thing which I found very interesting was it did not just introduce me to a new culture, it almost put me there. So in a very personal way, I felt like I was there while I had and still haven't ever visited Iran. I recently reread it and I found a lot of new things. It could be the very first graphic novel you read, but could, it's so powerful it could also be a graphic novel you could read times and times again, even after years, and you'd still find something deeper and more meaningful 
than what you possibly discovered the first time. The second one is also the second graphic novel I read. Anybody who's read even four or five graphic novels is a great chance you've already read this. If you haven't, then we shouldn't be waiting even a day more. Is this book called Mouse or Mouse M-A-U-S by Art Spiegelman. Now, this one actually is a story from back in the Nazi era, but it was published in somewhere between 80s and 90s, 1980 to 91. And uh, this one influenced me so much that a lot of people think that my character, which is the copper rat, is influenced by the mouse. While that is not exactly true, I do think I got a lot from the mouse, which in a way influenced the way I built copper rat as a character. It's also, by the way, the first graphic novel to win a Pulitzer Prize. So that shows the depth of the medium and the power of the writing. What is this about? This also is personal and autobiographical. This also is a book in two parts. This is actually Art Spiegelman interviewing his father, who's a Polish Jew during Holocaust. He witnessed the Holocaust and it's, it's of course a topic we've all heard of. But I think what I found extremely enriching about this book was how personal the story was. But what I loved more than the story being personal and him retelling his father's tale is how he makes it his own story as well. It's also his own story grappling with his father's, let's say, reality. It's also black and white, but a lot more elaborate compared to, let's say, Persepolis, because here, uh, as you see, he uses a lot more patching and all those techniques to make it a lot more visual and a lot more 3D-like, if you may. Now, what is this book really famous for? What it's famous for is the whole symbolism of it. So in this, he's actually represented humans as animals. So there is a lot of symbolism in how and why he has chosen those animals to represent those nationalities and ethnicities as well. The Jews are represented as the mice and the Germans unsurprisingly are represented as cats. But there are other nationalities also. The Poles are represented as pigs and so on and so forth. Um, this introduced me to the power of symbolism. When you read, of course, a fiction, you're reading a human story, right? And you imagine them as humans. But the moment you look at them as specific animals, which have certain connotations attached to with the characteristics of those animals, is where you start feeling a certain way about those characters as well, right? It's also beautifully illustrated. You feel like you're being in the story, but you're sort of witnessing it from the outside. Just like the author is doing that because he's not just talking about the father's story as it is. He's also talking about him speaking to the father and writing the story. There's a story of the person's story he's telling, but there's also his own story and how those two sort of come together because they're related. The third one is actually a book which took me by surprise. I did not expect uh, this to blow my mind the way this did. Uh, this is a book which is often in the top five or the top 10 graphic novels you should read of all times. Um, it's also a lot more recent. It's actually a book from 20, 2009. I'm talking about Asterios Polyp, Asterios Polyp, if that's how you pronounce it right, by David Mazzucelli. Now, this one, unlike the previous two, is not autobiographical. Uh, it's more fiction, but you do tend to see traces of maybe the author because the book in parts gets somewhat philosophical and also goes between the character's past and derives from that. Now, this is about Asterios Polyp, who is a Greek and Italian professor. And the book actually starts with a lightning strike which burns his house and he just goes and takes a very polar opposite or an extreme contrast to his present life and becomes an auto mechanic. In essence, the book is about duality because there's a backstory of how he had uh, a twin brother who was stillborn and therefore he's sort of living both of their lives. And there's that duality which comes in various uh, formats, uh, visual, metaphorical, even, you know, in the writing. What I love about it is it's sounding philosophical, but it's actually philosophical without being philosophical. And it's hard to explain because you realize how art can actually help simplify some of these philosophies. Again, this is just one example where he's talking about how things don't exist either as black or white, right? They're always 
along a continuum there are always those shades of grey which he's represented like this as you can see so while you're experiencing this story you're also in awe of how the creator could even think of bringing in such amazing innovation and he used pretty much every tool at his disposal to support the narrative so there is innovation in the way he used colors there's innovation in the way he used art style characters names are also somewhat symbolic so one example he is in a party where he's not able to talk to anybody because everybody seems like very distinct and he feels very separate and alone but there's somebody who catches his eye and he goes and talks but you see that beautifully represented where all the characters seem to be almost made of different substance where he cannot relate to them while there is somebody who he still finds close enough and how you know he goes and approaches and how the worlds actually merge not just literally but also visually each character for instance has different fonts those fonts are also representative of the character so if there is somebody who's a little more let's say straight jacketed a lot more sort of rational linear like the main protagonist himself his font is of course those all capitals easy to read linear font while let's say somebody has a cursive font depending on them being extremely empathetic but that innovation is not just for the sake of it it actually supports and helps build that character for you now why this really changed my life or moved me is because first of all i realized that a graphic novel could not just be symbolic it could actually be philosophical i'm not talking about those old boring philosophies told and shoved in your face i'm talking about how the author is able to express his beliefs through the art itself and through the characterization and through the fonts and literally every tool which is available to graphic novel creators disposal two it also made me feel that you could do a lot more with the medium i mean you think it's just art and it's just copy but there is so much possible in just these two and how they interplay with each other as well third i also realized how they don't have to be autobiographical to really make you feel related it's a 50 year old and i was nowhere close to that age still i'm not when i was reading it but it felt still so related to that character and his world the next one again is not really a surprise entry but a lot of you may get technical and say hey it may not even be called a graphic novel and i disagree it is unsurprisingly one of the most famous comic books of all times but also a novel in all its means and i'll make a separate video explaining the difference between a comic and a graphic novel but the book which is one of my top 5 is watchmen now watchmen is by alan moore david gibbons extremely famous comic creators and this is one of the most acclaimed comics of all times it's also important to understand that this was in 1987 there were the traditional comics and then there was serious let's say literature being brought about as visual comics and therefore maybe people wanted the different nomenclature and this book was somewhere around that time it's actually in times list of one of the best novels of all times watchmen is actually a book with a lot of superheroes in it but they're not just the same old same old superheroes they're not you know superheroes goes fights the villain and boom that's the entire plot this actually has superheroes but more talking about their morality and their shades of gray it's actually a satire on the entire superhero concept itself now this is actually a time uh, in 80s where superheroes which were earlier revered have either retired or they've been outlawed by the government but there are these superheroes who still of course cannot get over the past and the joy of being revered and still want to come and fight some cause or the other what i love about it first of all is the art is amazing it's actually vintage very very typical comic book vintage 80s 90s art but extremely beautifully done in fact i've been trying to get my hands on Watchmen Noir which is a black and white version of the same I also love the characterization because it is about not superheroes and their superpowers but superheroes and their morality so all the protagonists have their own moral dilemmas and their own ethics and the situations which sort of blur the boundary one of the first characters which is introduced is Rorschach which is I think also the most popular one 
and i was always wondering why the research is called research because you know i had studied psychology and I studied the research ink blood test it is actually based on that because he wears a mask or a sock which has that ink blot and that's the beauty of it because there is a symbolism in that name and therefore the characterization itself which also shows a little bit of the gray of the character as you can hear i'm talking a lot about the morality and all of those philosophical terms while talking about a book which is about superheroes and that's that's the beauty of uh, this one so the reason why it changed the way i looked at graphic novels forever is because it blurred the boundary between the comic or the traditional comic form which were either fantastical or humor and the graphic novels which were or are supposed to be a little more serious you know possibly more literature if you may the second is while the world is fantastical like i said the characters are extremely real which is a take which i never expected the third i have not seen moral dilemmas being expressed in a more beautiful way you look at superheroes uh, when you watch a movie with a lot of very different emotions they're all like emotions of or it seems like it's happening in some fictional place far far away this one seems like it's actually your world because the backdrop is real but this is one where the us actually won the vietnam war the same political events but an alternate reality so you feel like you're in this reality and you know these superheroes don't feel super heroes i have at least 10 books which i wanted to include in this list i realized that it'd be unfit for me to put all of them in one i definitely intend to make another one where i'll talk about maybe another five books but the one which i've picked as number 5 is this book called fun home by alison backdell now this one came out in 2006 and i read it very very late as recent as 4 or 5 years ago this one's a graphic mo- memoir now this book is actually about alison bechdel's again autobiographical but very complex relationship with her family and especially her father it's about her childhood in the us it's also a coming of age from childhood to early adulthood but it explores a lot of themes it explores a lot of somewhat modern relatable themes of sexuality you know dysfunctional family and so on it's personal but it's also reasonably controversial and in a way all the books in this list are extremely controversial why i say this is because four out of the five books in this list actually made it to top 10 challenge books of all times but um, this one's all the more controversial because it also talks about non-binary sexuality it talks about alison bechdel who also realized that she was a queer and her coming out to her parents as well what i love about this book first of all the art here is beautiful it's very different from the previous ones this is actually outlined but it's done with a gray blue ink on watercolor paper so very different from let's say the traditional extremely black and white ink or even the very colorful ones like watchmen as the characters look far more real like you can actually see her you can see her mother you can see her father you can tell from the picture how they would actually look and that's why possibly it's called a memoir now this one had parts which i found hard to understand to the extent that i had to Google because it has a lot of other literary references but how Alison Bechdel puts it is that these drawing of parallels between the characters from old literature classics helped her understand her own family so it's it's complex it's not an easy read also because the narrative is very non linear like you keep moving from past to present when it's i mean far from being chronological that also you see is intentional because again in words of Alison Bechdel and I'm not an authority in her work but she's trying to draw the people in a very long, non-linear fashion from sort of the outside or seeing the picture from an outsider's gaze to actually inside to sort of being in that situation how this one again changed my life and how I looked at graphic novels is because one it opened my mind on how literary a graphic novel could be i had never read a graphic novel which was so hard to read and understand uh, and i'm not saying that in a negative way how it was 
possibly more lucid yet more complex than a lot of the written word and some of the masterpieces which i've read two i also was in somewhat of a discomfort quite often in the book it uh, i kept wondering if it was okay the way she was talking about something which was so deeply personal she even went to her family photographs illustrated copied them to represent them a lot more truthfully and close to reality the other graphic novels i talked about a bunch of them are autobiographical could it even be this real was something i never expected and uh, to also experience somebody's own journey a character from a very different reality a person from a country a culture and a sexuality so different from you know my own and i could still sort of be a part of her story her narrative her equation her relation her family and the dysfunctionality of it i hope that video was helpful i think even if you end up reading one of these books i'd find myself successful in introducing you to a world which you possibly were not exposed to before this so uh, please let me know if you pick any of those if you already read any of these five please let me know in the comments uh, why you like them and what you thought about them when you first read them and did they have possibly the same influence on you as they had on me if you liked the content uh, i of course uh, intend to talk a lot more about graphic novels uh, a lot of you are still struggling to find the difference between graphic novels and comics don't worry i have a video coming where i'm going to talk about the difference though i think it's more terminology than real difference per se but if you like this content uh, please like the video please comment on how you liked it and would love for you to just subscribe there's a lot of other content i talk about as well i talk about career breaks because i'm really passionate about them i also talk about side hustles if you like those topics or if you are interested in illustrations you are interested in knowing my process uh, please subscribe to the channel